Today I'd like to uh, move forward in our uh, speaker who is uh, part of the greater art community, um, Professor uh, Dr. Anastasia Sakelariade. Quite right, was it? All right. Anyway, she is got her PhD at University College London in public archaeology and heritage, which is near and dear to pretty much everybody in this community. And so we're, we have a lot of interesting uh, things in common and things to learn. And she she worked on that in Greece uh, and has continued to work on with uh, communities, uh, current communities in Greece on their uh, heritage situation. She's also had various affiliations with Princeton and continuing on the UCL. So she's part of our, a new, newer member of our community, so it's really nice to get to know her. And today, her title, I'm sure it's the same one reading, um, What is the Future of Archaeology in Greece? How the Nation Building Project Devalues Archaeology, that's radical, and the Quest for Relevance. So this, I think, will be particularly engaging for us, regardless of whether we work in Greece or not. So I'd like you to welcome her very much. Thank you for coming. Well, good afternoon from you too, and thank you all very much for um, joining us today. Special thanks to Professor Pasco for the kind uh, welcome, and Sarah Kanza and the rest of the uh, facility staff for the hospitality. I'm going to talk about values of archaeology in Greece, uh, and more specifically, I'll try to demonstrate how that the national views of the past, antiquities, and archaeology has compromised other broader political, uh, social, and even the economic values uh, of archaeology in Greece. This is an argument I'm currently developing. It draws from my doctoral thesis at UCL, and any feedback would be greatly welcome. So, um, I'm first going to give you a brief overview of archaeology in Greece, the politics of the past, and the establishment of uh, the discipline and the practice in legislation and administration. As I, I wasn't at all sure how familiar uh, each one of you might be with the case of Greece. I will then explain uh, briefly my methodology, the type of data I collected, and give some important information about the case studies uh, I used. I will then discuss how people directly prioritize the national value over any other type of values, demonstrate to what extent people assign any other type of value, and argue as a result that other values are being greatly com compromised by the national views of the past. Finally, um, I will set out my thoughts about how um, another archaeology is possible in Greece. I believe that a more self-reflective, uh, nuanced, and less self-referential archaeology may enable us to tell more relevant and subtle stories about the past and to more efficiently address serious issues that we are facing today, such as racism, social fragmentation, and injustice. I will make suggestions about specific steps that we need to take in hope that in the end maybe another archaeology may uh, render another national identity possible. So, um, as Professor Hasdorf mentioned, my work is founded on questions that public archaeology seeks to answer, as it is defined in the UK, any area of archaeological activity that interacts or has the potential to interact with the public and the investigation of this uh, interaction. <coughs> The basic, basic premise is that sustainable protection and conservation of material culture of the past require people's understanding and appreciation. I would not like to join the voices of those who argue that our work should also extend beyond the narrow realms of our discipline. So we now understand much better the role and contribution of culture to communities and are in a better than ever position to contribute to the pressing issues of our times through our understanding of the past, rendering this archaeology relevant to people's lives today. Uh, I do that here, this kind of work falls more within uh, cultural anthropology. I also draw from uh, more uh, uh, mainstream cultural anthropological work, uh, work in sociology, museum studies, heritage studies, social theory, and post-processional archaeological uh, theory as well. Now let's turn to our topic. Um, I will not discuss very much, I will not spend a lot of time on the historical context, but uh, I need to bring up a few uh, uh, 
big ideas about it to, to, to give you some basic understanding in case you're not familiar. So the relationship uh, people in Greece have developed with the past and with archaeology was mainly formulated in the 18th century in the context of Hellenism. Morris has defined this as the idealization of ancient Greece as the birthplace of a European spirit. The balance uh, between the great powers of the time, Britain, France, and Russia, uh, played a major role into that as well, and also the development of what is known as the neo hellenic Enlightenment, which is the reappropriation of classical heritage and the internalization of the discourse of Hellenism for the development of a Greek national identity. So here, uh, with the images, I want to bring uh, up examples and remind you of the movements of philhellenism, the competition in European museums to gain antiquities from Italy and Greece, uh, and the, the general context is obviously the, the struggle of Greece to gain its independence from the Ottoman Empire, but also the developments in uh, history of art with Winkelmann's work and the uh, history of Asian art play their own in this. So the problem of classical antiquities acquired in the national narrative resulted in the dominance of art historical approaches in Greek archaeology, evident as much in approaches to protection and conservation as in the public presentation and interpretation of antiquities and the past. For example, in museum's development and exhibition, as scholar Andromachi Gazi and Madlen Mouy discussed, and also has affected not only the development of the discipline, as Kostos Kotakis has demonstrated, but as I hope to show today, the socio-political and economic role of archaeology. Within this very broad national context, we also have the case of uh, uh, Greek Macedonia, uh, which I need to make special mention to because uh, two of my case studies uh, are located there. So, uh, Greek Macedonia has been called the archaeological other of southern Greece because of its near exclusion from the European notion of Hellenism, its past mentioned by classical writers, and archaeologists' consequent indifference towards its history. The area remained part of the Ottoman Empire until 1912, when it was surrendered to the Greek army, and an effort of antiquities was established at its capital, Thessaloniki, 15 days later. Within the next six months, two more archaeological services were established in the area. So this otherness continued, uh, continued until 1977, when Manolis Andronikos excavated the great Tumulus in Regina. The group of tombs found was associated with the royal Macedonian family and Philip II, the father of Alexander the Great, and the discovery was met with hitherto unprecedented national and international attention and brought on financial support and research interest. There was an obvious impact on the public perception of the discipline as well, due both to the political implications of the discovery for the dispute with the then Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia, and to the admiration for the artistic and material quality of the finds. To give you an idea of the impression the finds in Virginia left uh, on people and on archaeologists, the term the Virginia syndrome was coined by Antonio Zoris, professor of archaeology in Madrid, to describe a particular pathology in the process of archaeological work production. The trends are hunting excitement, where the archaeological value, that is the historical importance or significance, are overshadowed by the hymnology of the valuable material or the form. Uh, to say a few words about the establishment of archaeology and legislation and administration, the first legal and administrative measures for the protection of antiquities were taken in the new country's effort to prove its belonging to uh, Europe, during even as early as the work of independence was still going. They countered looting, promoted the collection of scattered antiquities in schools, and assigned curatorial duties to teachers, encouraged people to surrender their uh, fines, and founded the National Museum. The first archaeological law was drafted by the Bavarocracy, the great powers established in Greece, when Otto, son of Ludwig I, King of Bavaria, was enthroned King of Greece in 1834. That law stated that all antiquities inside Greece, because they are works of the ancestors of the Greek people, are regarded as the national possession of all the Greeks in general. The spirit of the law has remained unchanged ever since. Now, the current law was enacted in 2002, 
with notable adaptations in the role of archaeology in contemporary society. Primarily, a more inclusive definition of protection uh, that mentions facilitation of access and communication, enhancement and inclusion in contemporary social life, and citizen sensitization regarding cultural heritage. Four out of its 11 founding principles refer to the social dimension of protection, the enrichment of protective strategies, and the complementarity between state and citizens' duties, and the facilitation of citizens' access to features of cultural heritage. More importantly, the Greek constitution recognized in 2001 protection of the cultural environment as an individual right. And this has provided fundamental support for citizens who want to challenge the archaeological services decisions. And we have seen since then many uh, quite uh, public cases of uh, struggles between local community groups. The most current happening right now is the Philopathy group in Athens where they're trying to stop the local effort from putting up fences around the Philopapu Hill, which has been always viewed as an open park, but is also an archaeological site, and against the decisions of the administrative court of Greece, the effort is these days setting up fences uh, to close off the park and turn it into a controllable um, site that will bring in revenue. In a critical reading, uh, the current loss is the social role of antiquities and archaeologists, uh, archaeology fulfilled primarily through visits to museums and archaeological sites. Both highly controlled and regulated spaces where formal approaches enjoy full and uncontested authority over the visitor. Permit for the use of monuments can be granted under conditions such as the compatibility of the event with the character of the monument, that the event concurs with the original use of the monument and is of an appropriate quality. These terms are not defined anywhere. It's up to the councils and the efforts to make these decisions. The control of the archaeological service over the use of antiquities unjustifiably extends to ensuring their ethical use and safeguarding their sacredness from provocations ranging from the use of an image of the Pantanon by Coca-Cola to covers of the German magazine Focus more recently. Admittedly, in the last decade, many museums have been renovated and new ones have been founded. Educational programs and initiatives to attract visitors to archaeological museums and sites have proliferated. It remains no doubtful whether these developments reach beyond aesthetical, technological, and communicative advances to constituting fundamental ruptures with deeply rooted mentalities of controlling authority over the meanings, values, and legitimate interpretations of the past of antiquities and of archaeology in Greece. Thus, archaeology in Greece remains an ideologically-laden state-run activity, and I quote here for, from an archaeologist who is a member of the Academy of Athens, who describes, quote, those who discuss art and monuments as part of the social becoming and changes in times and in the mentality of people, basically those who, uh, who discuss art through values, as heritage values, he describes them as, and I continue the quote, sirens of pseudo-social theories. So, out the window goes 120 years worth of debate on values, heritage, and best practices in sustainable conservation, according to um, uh, this particular archaeologist member of the Academy of Athens. The archaeological service is one of the oldest uh, state services in Greece. It, is founded in, it was founded in 1833. Its structure reflected until very recently the tripartite schema uh, the history of Greece was fitted to in the 19th century in order to serve the argument of uninterrupted continuity of the Greek culture. So ancient services, services regarding ancient antiquities, uh, Byzantine, that is medieval, and modern services. It was only uh, a couple of years ago that the services were brought in under the same roof after 35 years of, con of conversation about this change. The Central Archaeological Council, another historic institution dating back to 1836, is the highest advisory board to the Minister of Culture. The Ministry of Culture, which consists primarily of the archaeological service, was itself founded during the Colonel's Junta in 1971. 
I consider the operation of the archaeological service in the context of the modern state as a disembedding mechanism, as discussed by Giddens, from the pre-existing relationships that people had developed with their local antiquities, as expressed in myths, legends, rituals, their indigenous archaeologies, as Hamilakis has defined them. Now, in order to investigate the values of archaeology, I looked into three local communities that were all adjacent to archaeological sites through a combined methods approach. The site of Krimi, the, the local community of Krimides is adjacent to Philippi in Kavala in northern Greece. I will show you a map with all the sites uh, right after. It is a settlement of uh, approximately 3,000 residents. It's been named after the Thasian colony that Philip II, King of Macedon, took under his protection and re re renamed after him in the 4th century BC. The archaeological site consists of late Roman and early Byzantine antiquities of monumental character, <coughs> including the Forum, Thermle, ancient, an ancient theater, basilicas, an octagon complex with the baptistery and the acropolis. There is an archaeological museum on site. Um, it reopened in 2010 after 15 years of renovation. Crinidas is a rural town in transition to an urban economy. At the time of fieldwork, it was the capital of the municipality of Philippi, but it has been currently merged with the municipality of Cavallo. The site also holds the Philippi Festival, which was initiated by the intellectual elite of Cavallo in the 1950s. It is the second oldest ancient theater uh, festival in Greece, after the one in Epidavros. Archaeological research by this service, the French School uh, in Athens and the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, has been taking place there for the last century. The site was finally inscribed to the World Heritage List in 2016. The second case study is the community of Despio. Despio is adjacent to uh, the archaeological site with the same name in Castoria, again in northern Greece. It is a settlement of approximately 1,000 people and lies next to the only Neolithic lake settlement systematically excavated and presented in Greece. The Aristotle University of Thessaloniki was conducting research for the last 20 years there. Um, the research stopped after the passing of the professor who was heading it a few years ago. But uh, there is, um, uh, the university just got a very big grant from uh, the European Research Council for the study of all the material that, that had come out of uh, 20 years of excavations. Until then, the area had attracted little archaeological attention. The excavation of the wood homes, the houses of the lake settlement were built on, has allowed uh, the development of a reconstruction of the settlement in the form of an eco museum. And these are the, the images at the uh, far right uh, are from the museum. While this is a small exhibition that is co-hosted with the archaeological workshop. Uh, was, uh, this one includes original material and it's under the archaeological service uh, attention and, and care. One of the uh, reconstruction, because it is a reconstruction of original, is being managed by the municipality. Fur manufacturing, the area's main economic activity, has been in decline since the early 90s. And the neighboring church of the Ascension and the uses of the site before it was excavated, among other things for a week-long country fair, possibly the most important event of the year in this period, has caused animosity between the local priest, his flock, and the archaeologists. And the final site I'm going to look at is Delphi obviously next to the archaeological site of Delphi in central Greece. Uh, the modern settlement consists of about 1,500 residents uh, and it developed in close association with the development of archaeological research in the area. The site consists of the classical monumental uh, remains of the sanctuary of Apollo and of Athena Prothea and is presented in the recently renovated archaeological museum. Delphi is also a World Heritage Site, and thus is managed under stricter regulations. And its inclusion in the list was made possible after the local community successfully campaigned for the cancellation of plans to build an aluminum plant in the proximity of the site. The local economy has been dependent on tourism for a long time now. 
The population is diminishing as a result of the limitation of work opportunities in the tourism industry and due to the prohibition of new constructions in the town. So, um, on the map, you can see Crimides is here and Philippi. This video is close to the border with uh, Albania. And Delphi is in central Greece part of the Greek state for much longer than the other two uh, cases. So, uh, the data I collected, I conducted both quantitative and qualitative uh, research. Uh, <clears throat> I did 284 structured interviews among the communities and 29 in-depth interviews with local stakeholders and officials of the Ministry of Culture. I also collected data from the municipality archives, the national statistics service, the state budget, comments made by uh, the survey participants, the national press, and conference proceedings and press announcements by the Association of Greek Archaeologists, the trade union of uh, state and modern archaeologists. I used uh, a 38 questions long questionnaire that included both open-ended and closed questions on demographics, uh, participants' perceptions on archaeology and its relevance to contemporary life, investigating participants' relationship with local archaeology and their level of engagement with it, and finally with questions on their engagement with other local cultural stimuli. I do stratified random sampling on the basis of gender and age according to the population profile drawn for the most recent national census. And I did field work in 2007, 2008, and 2009. So this is right before the full extent of what has been called as the economic crisis was revealed. And thus this data set constitutes a valuable benchmark for any future research on the topic, uh, I believe. I have submitted the entire data set in all formats uh, with metadata files to the dataverse of the Journal of Open Archaeology data and published a meta-paper um, alongside in order to discuss uh, the methodology in case someone here is interested in more details. Now, I will turn to see some of these um, questions and participants' responses. Um, there were, first of all, questions that directly address the relationship between the national narrative and archaeology. So, participants were asked to agree or disagree on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being strongly agree, with three statements. The vast majority, in all three case studies, agreed with the statement that the monuments of the past constitute one of the most important sources, if not the most important one, of the Greek national identity, leaving us with no doubt about uh, how we valorize antiquities in Greece. Again, a great majority in all three case studies strongly agree with the statement that Greek archaeologists' national mission is to prove Greece's glorious past. The perception of Greek archaeology as enlisted to the cause of nation building, clearly representative of the initial aim of the discipline in the 19th century, persists in the public understanding of the discipline until today. There has yet to be an official effort to deconstruct the national character of archaeology in Greece and to present the discipline and its practices as a social science politically entangled in the past and the present and with its limitations. Fewer, although still significant numbers of participants agreed with the statement that ancient Greek civilization is the oldest in the world and unsurpassable by any other ancient civilization. Demonstrating thus the lack of contextualization of the past of Greece in a global setting and thus the devalorization of any other past culture. The high level of agreement in these three uh, statements could be attributed to the extreme way these were couched. I drew these, these are conclusions from a doctoral research by Professor Kasvikis on the presentation of the past uh, antiquity and archaeology in um, primary school textbooks. Although one might have expected that uh, the exaggerated manner would make would deter participants from agreeing with them to the degree that they did. Factors uh, universal uh, with universal effects, such as the rise of national feelings in public education, would also account for them. Greek public education has been repeatedly demonstrated to be ethnocentric, 
in relevant research, and similar feelings also appear in public opinion survey, surveys regarding the role of culture in society in Greece. As the university archaeologist in this video noted in uh, his interview with me, in the absence of a constructive relationship between archaeology and the public, there is space for the development of an ideologized understanding of the past and of archaeology that nurtures nationalism. In the question, do you believe that archaeology has value, and if yes, what do you believe is the most important value it has? Consensus among sites was, was striking and demonstrated a strongly embedded and geographically widespread belief in the historical, the scientific value of archaeology, the one that supports the national narrative. This was followed by the educational slash intellectual one that refers more to the individual's uh, education and own uh, culture, and the social one. Last, in preferences, came the economic value and the political value. The attribution of such importance to the historical and scientific value of archaeology confirms the dominant role uh, that archaeology has as a handmaiden of history in public perceptions in Greece and of the perceived scientific profile of the discipline itself. It also follows closely the findings of research in archaeological narratives in school textbooks and among students. This is combined with a greater reluctance to attribute social, cultural, economic, and even more so political values in archaeology. Now, participants offered a variety of answers to the question of what do you associate archaeology most closely with? The category is national history, primarily in Trinides, which is the site next to Philippi, ancient art, in Delphi, and life in the past in this period prevail, while tourism and contemporary politics lag behind. Now this is hardly surprising as majority responses among the case studies vary according to the nature of the archaeological sites themselves and of the, of the archaeology practice in each one of them. Philip is a site closely related to the history of Christianity in Greece because of its uh, inclusion in St. Paul's uh, itinerary towards Europe and his uh, epistles uh, uh, to the Philippians. At Delphi, the emphasis on the achievements of ancient Greek art is exhibited in the museum and the site itself, bereft of any further context regarding religion or life in the city of Delphi. There must have been a city around Delphi, it can't have only been a sanctuary, right? This video is a prehistoric site that does not fit in the historical national narrative and where a more anthropological archaeology has been practiced and hence the difference in their responses. In the question, do you feel that people who lived in the area from Neolithic times and left these ruins are your ancestors? Do you feel relation to them? The majority in all three case studies um, agree. Uh, gave a positive reply, with uh, considerably less in this PO, just over half. The results of this PO may be due to the fact that the settlement is rather recent, the fact that the archaeological remains of the area are dated to the Neolithic without the intervention of any other classical, Hellenistic, Roman or even Byzantine material. There, is, there are remains of a Hellenistic um, uh, fortification wall, but they are very poorly preserved. And this may also have contributed to the fact that they feel unrelated to it. Another factor may have been the extended sermon by the local priests when the excavation started on how Jesus was the founder of all civilization on earth. Actually, a participant echoed this view when she said to me, Christ brought religion to earth, we do not come from animals. Furthermore, the generic and generally restricted way in which prehistory has been portrayed in popular culture and in public education may also explain why people found it difficult to associate with these times. As another participant said, the Neolithic peoples were nomads. Overall, the more prominent and fitting to the national narrative local archaeology is, the more people are likely to claim descent, at least in cultural terms, from it. Uh, it, might, uh, it might be worth um, mentioning, I have not included in this presentation um, 
cross tabulations with demographics because then the, the, the story becomes too big to include in a, in a brief talk. But here, age and education correlated significantly to participants' answers in Clinidas and in Dispio. And in both sides, more participants between the ages of 18 and 39 did not feel that people who were originally associated with the sites were their ancestors. It may be that one's feeling of ancestry increases with age, or that we are seeing a generation that is more detached from the ancient past. This result also confirmed younger participants as more critical towards archaeology than other age groups. Regarding education, two-thirds of participants in Grenides and almost three-quarters in this video, who did not feel that people who lived in the area in the past were their ancestors, had more than compulsory education. Of course, some social value beyond the national identity building is still ascribed to archaeology, and this became evident in more indirect questions where archaeology was found to constitute a part of these communities, to improve their ways of life, and to raise feelings of the community's responsibilities for the protection of the archaeological sites. So in the question, do you feel that these sites belong to you and constitute part of your community? And if not, to whom would you say that they belong? That the vast majority, in, in both in, in all three sites, uh, stated that the site belonged to them and it was a part of their community. Uh, three quarters, <coughs> almost three quarters in Delphi. Participants who replied negatively said that the site belonged to Greece in general, to the whole world, particularly in Delphi, 20% of them. Expressing awareness of the site's international acclaim as experienced for many years in their everyday life and formally recognized through the World Heritage status and also to those who have the political interest and get the money. So one tenth of participants in Delphi who linked political and economic interests with the archaeological site demonstrate that political and economic values are ascribed as means to antagonize current heritage management. So they were expressed when participants made explicit claims to the revenues from entrance tickets and in respect to proposed countermeasures to balance the regulations over building restrictions, over the use of property and the negative impact of tourism in the community. Participants' positive answers to whether the archaeological sites belong to the community were reinforced by considerable level of agreement with the question, do you believe that these archaeological sites improve the quality of life in your area? A result that demonstrated that there is positive value in archaeology and it is identifiable even if it is stated in such vague terms as quality of life. In the question, do you feel that you have a kind of responsibility for and slash or rights to these archaeological uh, sites museums? Uh, again, the majority of participants in all three case studies replied yes, and they stated that they had both responsibility and rights, explicitly demonstrating willingness to support the conservation and their positive valorization. Further expressions of social value became evident in answers to the question of what advantages derive from, for, from the local community's proximity to the archaeological site, and there people mentioned value, pride, and advancement, publicity for the village, research in local history and culture, cultural events, mobility of people, intellectual development, scenic beauty, and spiritual health. But these values were um, uh, assigned by from a quarter of participants in each uh, case study to about 3%, uh, the least of them. However, by far the most widely mentioned advantage of archaeology was tourism. Admittedly, 80% of participants in Delphi, that, that makes sense, 76% in this video and 60% in Grenides. Considering the above, I think that one would expect that archaeology is highly relevant to people's lives today. However, when participants were asked to grade how relevant they regarded archaeology to be in contemporary life on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being extremely relevant, over half of participants in Delphi, half in Clinides, and one-fifth in this period regarded it as relevant. Only 15% in Clinides, 18% in Delphi, and a significant 37% in this period felt 
that archaeology was actually relevant to our lives today. The percentages at Delphi and Kylides were quite similar. However, there is a clear difference in the answers from this PO. A possible explanation for this could be the fact that this PO, the only prehistoric lake settlement open to visitors in Greece, attracts more domestic than international tourism. This means that the visitors these periods come into contact with are Greeks, and therefore they form a more positive impression about the relevance of archaeological heritage to people in Greece, as opposed to the other two sites. In Delphi and in Philippi, representative sites of glorious moments in ancient Greek history, participants kept contrasting the eagerness of international tourists to visit them, praising especially people coming from Asia, to Greeks' lack of apparent will to visit archaeological sites. Food and cafeterias were mentioned as the most prevalent interest for people in Greece and lack of education or of being cultured as the causes for this difference. To give you an idea of the importance of these responses, the contrast with surveys that are conducted in other parts of the world is striking. So one of these, uh, conducted by Pocotillo and, and Gapi, found that four times more participants than in Cremides and in Delphi considered archaeology relevant and only 11% considered it irrelevant to contemporary life. Uh, results in this video were actually closer to the ones from uh, service in uh, international service conducted, uh, with, including this question. And things become even more complicated when one considers that percentages vary slightly from case to case in the question, on a scale from 1 to 10, how much would you say you are interested in archaeology? Overall, more than half of participants stated that they were interested. The highest percentage of interested participants was found in Delphi, in Crenides uh, slightly lower, and finally in this video, 56% stated their interest. The percentage of participants interested in archaeology decreases from Delphi to Crenides and finally with this video, while the, that of uninterested ones increases. This may well be a result of the longer presence of archaeology in these areas, a nationally important and profitable presence in the case of Delphi at least, and the monumentality of their resources. Now at this point I would like to argue that there are three types of dissonance demonstrated in this data. The first one is between values attributed to archaeology and its most important advantage. So historical scientific values come first and economic value comes second to last, that tourism is mentioned as by far the most important advantage of archaeology for local communities. Political value comes last, although the political views of antiquity, for example, in the, conflict, in the Macedonian conflict and during the so-called economic crisis, have monopolized public discourse in and about Greece. And here I wanted to bring the um, uh, case of Amphipoli, which developed in uh, the last three years, but uh, Indian are run out of space <laughs> in this talk. I think it's a subject that merits its own presentation. This gulf persists even when the association of archaeology with tourism and contemporary politics is specifically addressed. The second is a disconnect between the social values that we found archaeology to generate as opposed to the low relevance attributed to archaeology. This demonstrates that little of the social value is actually materialized and identified in terms that make them specific and tangibly appreciated. Therefore, social value is compromised and goes unrecognized, while the national value is widely accepted as the high agreement with the statements I showed you in the beginning about the mission of archaeology uh, and, the role, uh, and the role of monuments in nation building and the place of ancient Greek culture in the world demonstrate. And the third dissonance is the gulf between the low relevance of archaeology versus participants' high interest in it. This could be good news, even if for the wrong reasons archaeologists have people's attention in Greece. The following findings, I believe, help us explain what becomes evident as a gulf between values, advantages, relevance and interest. The perception of Greek archaeology as enlisted to the cause of nation-building has been almost fully internalized by people. Any resistance focuses on the practice of archaeology and heritage management rather than on the actual valorization system that guides them. The value discourse is almost absent anyway, 
Instead, the values of the past antiquities in archaeology are being taken for granted. Archaeologists believe and stated that in their interviews that people know and understand why we need to conserve antiquities. They are, after all, the roots of our national being, right? But preparedness to agree with statements such as the one on the, uh, on the place of ancient Greek civilization as the oldest one in the world and as possible, as, as highly demonstrated in this, service, in this survey, is problematic. Indeed, the dominance of the national narrative is such that all participants were entirely oblivious of any contradiction in their statements. The role of universal public education cannot be understated, but also more recently of the mass media too, and this is um, an argument that the Amphipolis case uh, uh, demonstrates really well. Finally, the rift with prehistory that the national narrative has enforced leads to yet another disconnect with human prehistory beyond national cultures. Now, I would like to close with a few suggestions on how to move on from this 19th century percep perception of the past antiquities and archaeology and better prepare ourselves for issues that we are currently faced with. This is a particularly urgent need as what, what initially seemed to be a financial crisis in Greece in concurrence with many other events, such as the war in Syria, has since been revealed to be a larger crisis of values. People in Greece are being challenged in many respects, and some of their reactions are truly and fundamentally shaking our assumptions about who we are, who we thought we are, and who we need to be in order to face the future. Uh, I got goosebumps when I read uh, a brief uh, review of Professor Jason Stanley's book, How Fascism Works, and how he identified in his book the invocation of a mythical past showing division and attacking truth as essential elements of fascism. Through heritage, we have the privilege and the responsibility to address all three of these. In order then to construct a different national identity, one that is resilient, tolerant, and confident, we need a more self-reflective, nuanced, and less self-referential archaeology. It is time that archaeology in Greece embraces multidisciplinary approaches, opening up to fields such as public archaeology as defined at the beginning, public history, cultural anthropology, sociology, heritage studies, education, museum studies, and conservation, which uh, more recently acquired a much broader definition uh, internationally, would benefit the field. A critical history of archaeology in Greece would also contribute towards this direction. We also need transparency in heritage management and the decision-making processes in order to reveal which values archaeology has been choosing to preserve through material conservation and render the process open to debate and dialogue. It is time to openly admit uh, our Eurocentrism and how it has compromised the humanity of our past. Value debates surrounding archaeology break often in public uh, in Greece. Other than the Amphipolis case, uh, the, the finding of um, a whole part of the Byzantine city of Thessaloniki during the construction of the metro works sparked a huge uh, public debate back in 2013 about what we choose to preserve and what not. But no one openly admits or even realizes that their opinions derive from values that others obviously do not share. The authority and hegemony of Hellenism still lives on, even decades after European powers lost their colonies built on the paradigm of European superiority. We need to move beyond narratives that build divisions between peoples of the past and allow us to extend such divisions to today. We need more nuanced and elaborate narratives that address with sophistication matters that are relevant until today, and migration has become an issue that is more widely discussed uh, among uh, anthropologists at the uh, AAAs a couple of weeks ago. We need narratives that benefit from archaeological science and its advances, but also put this to the critical test of their limitations. And we also need a critical evaluation of the content and messages that uh, we have been uh, communicating through hundreds of permanent and, term and temporary exhibition, educational programs, and other such outreach activities. And finally, we should keep trying to renew our history textbooks in spite of the failures of several previous attempts. We need to desacralize, denationalize, and decolonize every instance of the archaeological discourse, not by falling back to the trap of a politically neutral display, which is a favorite argument amongst um, archaeologists in Greece, 
but talk, uh, and practice, but by fully engaging with the political nature of heritage from the opposite direction, the one that openly addresses the constructs that led us here. Only then will we be able to free ourselves from the constraints of the national narrative and pursue other benefits from our work as archaeologists and allow other heritage values to materialize. We need to make our communities relevant to our work first before our work becomes relevant to them. And, and, there, are, and there are so many different communities to, to work with out there. So for um, recent examples, not to leave you with a very pessimistic note, our collaborations with initiatives for the appreciation of urban architecture, such as the Open House, that have recently helped attract urban communities to archaeological sites in urban areas. There is also a great interest among younger, younger generations in contemporary archaeologists, which are entirely underdeveloped in Greece. Uh, again, to uh, finalize, to close with a positive note, there have been initiatives towards these directions recently. We have founded the Association of Heritage Managers and more recently the annual meeting uh, Archaeological Dialogues in order to try to introduce all these debates in Greece. There are enlightened state archaeologists who are retracing uh, archaeologists role in contemporary Greece through opening up archaeology to new collaboration, but there is still a lot of work ahead and the issues we are faced with are only increasing, they're not going away on their own. So, um, thank you very much for your attention. the more they appropriate this relationship with archaeology. So 
in Philippi, in Trinidad, and in Delphi, you would see replies where people would instantly say, oh, we think of our fear. We think of our museum, we think of this one. Even I think of my father who works at the excavations. Mm -hmm. While in this studio, which is archaeology, is, it is indeed an anthropological archaeology that is taking place there by a communist Marxist archaeologist, <laughs> to, to uh, amend the insult. Uh, people have a much more objective, uh, distance, detached relationship and come up with answers that make sense, like history, culture, such generic terms. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of my case study that I in, um, in my city, for instance. Um, and if I ask, the, if, when thinking about those same topics, I think there would, there would be that difference as well, that they don't actually think it's very relevant to, the, to what's going on. They see it as an economic advantage that they have an archaeological site, um, but they are actually all kind of interested. They do want to know what you're finding. I don't necessarily know why they want to know what I'm finding. Different generations will tell you different things. Um, but I, I noticed when there was a difference, you mentioned that, um, I think it was for Primidas, mm -hmm. was initially its own municipality, and then it was, and then it was um, incorporated when they made the changes. Mm -hmm. So I definitely noticed in my senior that when we were our own municipality, was a very different relationship with the archaeological site when they were both responsible for it and also immediately receiving benefit from the habitat. Once they were then combined with Argos, which they are now, and they don't get the jobs anymore, it's the people coming from over there from the city that are getting the jobs, um, they have a very different feeling and relationship. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You see how this came yeah. affects their relationship mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the site. Because I know Delphi stayed. Delphi stayed itself, it didn't get combined with the Delphi else. is also so close to the site and so associated to the site itself. Right. Well, literally, it literally was on the site originally. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> People that would show me on the site where the houses right. used to be. Uh, so the, that, that's a really good thing actually. Uh, initially, I had only designed the project to only include Clinidis and this video, and then Todd White was said, wait a minute, all this is, is not here. How are you going to compare this? And I included them for that reason. And the, the differences came up so spectacularly between the mentalities of people who have been affected by archaeology, working with archaeologists for a century, and the insights that are part of the newer ones, let's right. say, and have had an entirely different relationship with it. But we will see changes, because now we have the first generation of these pilots um, that have always lived with the archaeologists in their community, comes to age, so these changes will start showing there as well. Yes. Well, I just want to offer you a fantastic talk, but I think, I don't know how long you're here in the workplace, but an anthropology in a working group on tourism studies, that I'd love to hear this. Oh, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, some great work. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and then also one of the science and technology studies mm -hmm. center here on campus, I'd love this talk too. Okay. Uh, and I'm curious on the dissonance slide, the photo of the old white tourist train, where is that? This is in Delphi. Yeah. 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 These, these little trains are famous all over the world yeah. for turning people off. For, well, for turning academics off. Yeah, for academics, yes, but I'm not so sure about the people because, especially in Delphi, because it's kind of steep. Yeah. They want with this train to connect uh, the old house of Sikelianos with the archaeological site, so to encourage people to stay for longer in the area, because otherwise they just go on a day trip from Athens, and to disperse them in the site. They, they use this train, which is for free, obviously. I understand you're talking your reaction and our reaction to it, but sometimes it can be practical. It's doing a job. Yeah, yeah. it's serving a purpose. It's a stereotype in tourism studies that for all the new middle class East Asian tourists, you can't get them to extend unless you provide them with a tram or a shop or something. They they just wouldn't go and look at it at all if you don't give them a shot. Yeah, that might be true. Yeah, <laughs> in the case of Delphi too. Well, thank you very much for your suggestions, and I'll try to look up the people and get in touch. Thank you, Celia. So